machines. Simple machines do not have an internal source of energy, but they provide a force known as a mechanical advantage. And this mechanical advantage allows you to get a job done more easily. So while they don't provide any energy on their own, once you provide some energy, they help provide a force that makes the job easier to get done. Simple machines can combine with other devices in movements to form complex machines. So any machines that you know of are going to be made up of one or more of these simple machines. And simple machines include the lever. The lever is a stiff bar that involves moving a load around a pivot point. And this pivot point is known as the fulcrum. So to give you an idea of what a lever is as a simple machine, it would be pliers. It has two levers working around that pivot point in the middle to be able to do a job easier. Scissors, same thing, two lever levers around that fulcrum. Crowbars, um, once they get in where they're trying to move things, what they push against becomes where the pivot point or the fulcrum is, and you applying your energy at the end of the bar provides more force at the far end of the bar so that you're able to pry up whatever you're trying to pry with the crowbar. And teeter-totters. You have the fulcrum located in the center, loads on either side that are able to move more easily. Um, you're able to move, lift up, bounce another person, where if you were on the ground trying to lift them straight up, you would not be able to do that. But with the lever and the help of the fulcrum, you're able to bounce them up in the air, at least raise them up several feet off the ground. Next we have the pulley. And the pulley uses grooved wheels and a rope to raise, lower, or move a load. And the grooved wheels have a groove in them to hold that rope so that the rope stays around the wheel and the wheel helps move the rope which will be attached to a load and it'll help raise, lower, or move it. Examples include the flagpole. You pull on the rope it rotates around the wheels and it pulls the flag up way up into the sky without you having to climb up there and do it or carry anything. Clothesline, same thing. If you're pulling the clothesline forward, you can take pieces of clothes off, put them in the laundry basket, pull the clothesline some more, take pieces of clothes off, pull the clothesline some more, and it moves around a pulley system. And window blinds, same thing. You pull on them, they raise up because there's a pulley system up in the top part of your blind. So when you pull down, it's going to rotate up in the pulley system and pull the blinds up. Next, we have the wedge. The wedge is an object with at least one slanted side. that turns a smaller force working over a greater area into a larger force. And it can also be used to cut material. And what that means is that whatever you have that's wedge shaped is going to be maybe like a triangle like that, or if it sits flat on the ground, it at least has this one slanted side. And so if you put force on this end, you're going to be putting all this force you're expending over this whole part onto just this one small area. So it kind of um, focuses all that force onto the very end where the angled part is away from where the force is. So if you apply force here, it's all going to focus down at that point. So that's what it means by the smaller force over a greater area being focused into this one small area, but a great, a much larger force there. Um, some examples are tire wedge. So people will wedge a tire wedge under their back tires or front tires to keep it from rolling a certain direction. So if the tire starts to move, it kind of pushes back and keeps the tire or keeps the car from rolling. A hand axe, 
looks kind of like this and you would pound on something with it um, trying to cut it and because you're applying a lot of force here it's going to get focused here and you'll be able to cut things more easily and a chisel uh, usually is going to involve using a hand tool as well to pound it but you've got your chisel and you're pounding it and all the force is getting focused at the end of the chisel so you are actually getting the job done with less force than if you were actually having to cut or pound whatever it is using those tools um, these simple machines you are able to get a job done using your mechanical advantage which makes you be able to use less energy because you've got this force known as the mechanical advantage available from these simple machines next we have wheel and axle the wheel and axle is going to be a wheel with a rod called an axle that goes through the center and it lifts or moves loads. This allows for movement with less resistance. Examples of simple machine, or mm, examples of machines that use the wheel and axle are the bicycle, a doorknob, and a pencil sharpener, oh, and a wagon. So the bicycle obviously has wheels. They are connected by bars of the bike, and there are actually gonna be some other simple machines found in there, but that's one example for you. Wagon, same thing. You've got two wheels connected by an axle at the front, two wheels connected by an axle at the end, and it lets you move uh, whatever you put in that wagon a lot easier. If you tried to carry an armload of stuff that weighed 100 pounds, it would be really hard to do. If you put it in that wagon and dragged it along behind you, it'd be a lot easier. The doorknob, if you're trying to move the little latch in and out, it's going to be a lot easier if you just twist that knob than to try to hold the pressure or pull on the little pin that will keep the lever in and out from the inside. So the doorknob helps make that easier. Pencil sharpener, you're literally cutting away pieces of wood and you just have to crank on the side and then there's a wheel inside that has um, sharper edges that's going to be able to cut your pencil, but it's all wheel and axle based. These all include the wheel and axle simple machine. Now some of them do have other simple machines and that's why we talked about how you can combine several of these or all of these in some machines to form complex machines. You don't often use just a simple machine by itself. You combine it with other things to make your job even easier. Okay, another simple machine is our inclined plane. The inclined plane is a flat supportive surface that's going to be tilted at an angle where one side is higher and one side is lower and it's used to move heavy loads with less force. If you try to pick something straight up in the air it's going to be a lot harder to do than pushing it up a ramp, pushing it up an inclined plane. So examples would be a ladder. If you're climbing up a ladder that's inclined, you are able to go up easier than if you just tried to jump straight up or someone tried to pull you straight up. A wheelchair ramp lets people roll right up rather than try to bounce over stairs. Loading ramps, like on a truck, if you're trying to lift things and put them into a truck, if you could just roll them up a ramp, it would be a lot easier. And a slide, if you're going from top to bottom on a slide, you're going to be going a lot faster because you've got this inclined plane and you're getting down easier than if you just tried to jump. If you jumped off, not a safe idea. You can end up hurting some body parts where if you slide down, you're moving down with a lot less effort than having to climb down or jump down. And last we have the screw. The screw is in itself an inclined plane that wraps all the way around a pole. So you've got your center pole with that inclined plane that wraps all the way around it and it lifts things or holds things together. So obviously an example would just be a screw that you screw into things to hold things together. You put a screw between two pieces of wood, hold them together. You've got screws that hold together different kinds of furniture at your house. Other examples would be drill bits. If you're drilling a hole for a screw, you use different size drill bits, but they all have an inclined plane around a pole, and it's basically a simple machine known as a screw that's making that hole for you. A lid jar. 
If you've got a lid and you screw a jar on or off, that is the simple machine known as a screw. A swivel stool or chair. If you have a chair that swivels, it's using the screw as a simple machine. So, all of these simple machines are able to combine with one or more of the others to form complex machines that you find all over the place today. Your simple machines are the lever, pulley, wedge, wheel and axle, inclined plane, and screw. To find out more about how to ace your test and get more practice for your test, click the study guide. Learn why Mometrics is the best and smartest decision you could make for your test prep choice. We have done all the work cutting through the fluff to give you what you need to perform well on your exam. Click the study guide to get started now. And thank you for watching and learning with us.